inches of rain, almost nine inches of rain falling in just one hour. That leads to the mudslides and the flash flooding. It's only got 40 mile per hour winds right now, so winds aren't really the issue with this storm. Now, as it moves through this area and through Cuba, there's a chance that it's going to rip it apart even farther and Erica could become a tropical depression. That being said, we still have some of these tropical uh, storm force conditions that are expected through the Bahamas and into Cuba. Now, we are going to see it perhaps weaken and then most likely re-strengthen into a tropical storm once it moves back into the warmer waters of the Gulf of Mexico. The track of this storm has been shifting farther and farther to the east with every single model run. But look at this cone of uncertainty. There's still the possibility it could track along the west coast now of Florida. But for right now, the estimate is by Wednesday at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's to look at the rest of the country's forecast. Did you Dylan. notice he had a bag, too? Yeah, I think exactly. he actually was running some errands. Let me get my lunch. Getting the grocery shopping done. <laughs> Smart boy. Let's take a look at the weather across the country where we have a stalled front already producing rain in Florida. This has nothing to do with Tropical Storm Erica, and it is still heavy at this time. So any additional rain from Erica, perhaps as much as five to six inches, will perhaps cause some flooding concerns for Florida. In the northeast, it's a beautiful day. In the middle of the country, it's beautiful. Out in the northwest, though, we have a big storm system making its way on shore. Wind gusts could be up near 70 miles per hour, and most of the rain we're going to see is along the coast, not in the east eastern part of Washington or Oregon where we really need it, but we will see